Okay, so today I just wanted to make a quick video for you guys showing you one of the common tests that people do on their CAN bus networks, and that is the resistance test. I've got the battery disconnected on this Ford Fiesta that we're working on so that all the modules are asleep. I've got this breakout box plugged into the OBD2 port right here. I've got my ohm meter ready to go, and we're simply just going to take our leads and place them in the CAN high and CAN low, and we should get close to 60 ohms, which we do. Now the reason that we're reading 60 ohms is because on high speed CAN networks there are two 120 ohm resistors in two of the modules on the network and they're wired in parallel. Do a little ohms law, you figure out that when you wire them in parallel the total resistance of the circuit is half that and that's where we're getting this 60 ohms from. So when we see 60 ohms on the meter that proves that there is not an open in the circuit between where we're testing and between the modules that have those 120 ohm resistors. However, it does not prove that there's not an open somewhere else in the network to one of the other modules. So it's not a perfect test, but it's still a good one to do. If I read 120 ohms on this meter, that would mean I do have a, an open on the portion of the circuit where those termination resistors are. You could also get other readings while you're doing this test. Like if I saw the ohms really close to zero, that would mean that my can high and can low lines are shorted together. Um, you could have other shorts to ground and power and you could alter your test a little bit and measure your resistance between here and chassis ground and here and the power source. Um, so yeah, you could do a lot of things with this test. It's not a perfect test. I'll make another video where we do some better testing using the oscilloscope on this. But I wouldn't say that it's something you shouldn't do. It's still valuable and it still gives you a lot of information. One last thing I wanted to show you is a little less common of a test. But what I did is I re-plugged in the battery um, and I wanna show you what the ohms do when you put the key in and, and the modules start communicating again. So I'm just gonna turn the key on and I no longer read the 60 ohms, I start reading all, all over the place on my meter. And what that does is it proves to you that there is communication happening. So if you don't have a fancy tool like the PicoScope that we're gonna use in later videos, um, this is just a good way to find out that there is communication happening on the network.